Warren Buffett once told the story of his closest friend from Columbia Business School. The guy was incredibly smart, incredibly hardworking, really strong ethics, great character. They kind of were in a similar spot as they graduated, but the outcome of their lives was dramatically different based on a single decision. The friend of his went to the steel business and he said worked, you know, very hard, earned a modestly good living, while Warren went and started his first private partnership and then what would eventually become Berkshire Hathaway. And he said this final quote, which has always struck me or struck me then and stuck with me since it's not as important how hard you row, but what boat you are in. Got people who are operating, they are working every day, but they're operating in low leverage opportunities, <clears throat> right? So they're, they're doing things that do not give them a lot of return on their time. Right. And so it's like, I could work, it doesn't matter how many hours I work at McDonald's. I like, it's very, very difficult to become wealthy there. Right. It's just almost near impossible. Right. Mm -hmm. Um, versus like you could buy a building for $10 million and then sell it to somebody else for 11, you know, for $11 million, just get the contract and make a million dollars on the exchange. Super high leverage, right? From a time perspective, which sure. is crazy for somebody who doesn't have money to even contemplate something like that. Being risk averse is what I have noticed from the people who have the most money is that they actually have way lower risk tolerances than the people who have no money, uh, which is hilarious because it's like the people who have the least amount of money uh, then go buy lottery tickets, which are literally the worst investment you could possibly make. And, and they, they consistently invest their money in a terrible investment that has all the downside risk of going to zero. Whereas the richest people in the world find things that could never go to zero and they buy them for zero. So think about that for a second. When people are allocating their time, um, they're not by percentage, they're, they're kind of like consuming their time rather than investing their time. So they're either doing nothing or they're consuming the time rather than putting time into getting higher returns on their time, which is education, right? And so education you can have from like the conceptual learnings, watching stuff like this, um, or, and or the actual doing. Right. And so, you know, you learn taking more action, 100%. failing, messing up, you know, yeah. feeling like a, an embarrassment in yeah. the actions. Yeah. The first thousand uh, cold calls you make, the first thousand cold emails you do, the first thousand doors you knock on, the first thousand, you know, like you'll learn more from that than you'll learn from every single book you read up to that point True. on the concept. Like yeah. you, you'll learn. Right. Um, and so people don't allocate nearly enough time to that in the beginning. And so I think one of the things that the formal education system did really well, that people poo poo on it, is the idea of going into debt to gain education is something that fundamentally makes sense. Yes, but it's gotta be the right education you that a, can make you money. You gotta get a return on it. Yes. That's the, that's the issue, yes. right? You have to get a return on it. Cause like the idea of borrowing from a future self that can make more money to pay for the thing that you're getting the skill for makes total sense. Um, I think e Elon was saying something about how Neuralink in the future, it's gonna be such a competitive advantage that they could price it at whatever they want because once you have it, you'll be so much more able than anyone who doesn't have it that you could so easily pay off the price of the thing. That's how it should work conceptually, right? Crazy. So education is supposed to work. Yes. And so um, I like, this is the simplest example that I have. So a friend of mine has uh, a 17 year old daughter. She got a job at a bowling alley and she makes minimum wage. and. He said, why don't you become a phlebotomist? I was like, well, I don't want to spend the money. He's like, it's 500 bucks and it's a two day certification. And then after you have that, you make $25 an hour. So she didn't have the money. Now she could save it to get the $500, right? Or she could take a loan for the 500 bucks and from her dad and months. pay it back in yeah. a week, right? Right, Because she has higher earning capacity. And so it was like, she could, she could either save for eight weeks, right? From her, her bowling alley to pay the 500 or she could take a loan for the 500, do the two days, and then pay it off in a week. So at that one week, she now has seven more weeks of earning capacity. This is a micro example, yes. right? Seven more weeks of earning capacity at her new level, and she'd be net positive on the next seven weeks of earnings, right? And so that's just a micro example of like what skill investing does. Um, and so that, because I, a lot of us talk about like, you got to get educated, you got to learn stuff. And like you learn stuff by doing it. And a lot of times you pay for that education or access to people who can teach you those skills because a lot of people aren't going to give it to you for free. And that makes sense. It's okay. Right. Like it right. took them time to learn the thing and they compressed that time to give it to you. Mm -hmm. So I mean, that's why I'm a, like, educate. if there's one thing that's my like life's mission, it's education.